Hi, Donna. Cameo gold trim could be used as a pin or as a necklace. It has that little piece. That's right. Now, this particular piece, you're saying it looks like it's a cameo, but it's actually carved from mother of pearl rather than a shell like abalone. And you can tell it better from this side. Like if you compare it to these cameos, these cameos are shells, okay? The better cameos are, of course, you can tell better from the back, if you look at the back, by color, by type. Carved in Italy are much higher quality than those hot carved in Germany, America, or other places. The Italians are the carvers. Think of Michelangelo with David, great carvers, and the tradition of such. This piece is also 19th century. This piece has, in fact, a derivation of hair color. So, you know, after my own heart, she's a brunette. <laughs> you can see it here, the way in which they actually um, the enhance the color, yeah, this particular part. She's in profile, which is typical. Profile was seen, of course, as the best way to capture someone's likeness. Start in profile. It's harder to do it this way, full front. It's easier to do it in profile. So many of the cameo carvers will do it in profile. First, this is mother of pearl. It is set in 18 karat gold. It is Italian. It dates to about 1890 to 1900. Value on it, about $700. Very beautiful. How'd you acquire it? It was my grandmother's. Your grandmother's. Do you wear it? No. Not nor not ever. No, no. Sits in the safety deposit box or sits in the safe or just yes. isn't golden seed pearls. So Queen Victoria is just giving you <laughs> pins. Where are you? It was uh, a close family friend was a lady in waiting to Queen Victoria, and when she left her service to get married, we gave her that rope. Oh my gosh, that's fabulous. <laughs> that instruction. <laughs> I'm tired of this. Queen Victoria is even on that train. Actually, Not very nice. My grandmother was the youngest female. Her older sister did the work. Ah, excellent. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. Go in your older sister's jewelry box and say, all oh, your stuff is ugly. <laughs> Make her give it to you. It's terrible. There's an instruction that the oldest female, you get everything. It's crappy. <laughs> I think. Don't you think, young people? I know. The dual hearts is one of the symbols, of course, of Queen Victoria and the love affair that she, of course, had with her husband of many years, uh, Prince Albert, who dies in 1871. She goes into mourning for the next decade, doesn't come out of black, wears black for a decade, she's so sad. They were really meant for each other, and they were, of course, an arranged marriage. Um, they marry in 1840. This particular pin and other symbols like this are associated with the great long-term monarchy of Queen Victoria and her reign. So, not unusual that we would see this particular symbol and the connection and the story that you're telling. Value on the piece, about $1,500. Seed pearls and gold, as well as, that's just if it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with Queen Victoria, add another $2,000 at $3,500 because you have specific, authentic provenance for the object. $3,500 for the piece. Do you wear it? Um, don't say no, don't say no, don't say no, please wear it, just wear the jewelry. There, there are pictures of the last two generations. Do you wear it? I have not. Yet. Come on! I've only had it. Don't you want to impress somebody, you know, your high school reunion or something? <laughs> <laughs> or church or a wedding? I've only had it about a year ago. Get it on yourself. And go, Queen Victoria gave it to me. <laughs> Make them drool. It's fabulous. Really gorgeous. Very rare. 3,500. Thanks for coming. Thanks. I was coming out of the ladies' room and I heard Mark go, that's her. <laughs> I was like, yes, it's me. In and out of the ladies' room. <laughs> I got a new haircut for you because I was coming to Texas. When I go to Dallas, I get the big one, the big one. <laughs> I know, I'm going to get in trouble with that. Everybody from Dallas, like, Dr. Lord, don't make fun of us. I used to have big hair. Remember the 80s? We all had big hair. <sighs> I think Dallas forgot. They still have big hair up there. I have a very good friend who lives in Lubbock. And she's kind of like, girl, and she loves her boots and her big hair. And she's just wonderful. <laughs> I'm from 
Connecticut. Did you hear the ah? Did you hear it? You're all like, yeah, you Yankee. <laughs> when we tape in Atlanta, they're all like, oh, she's coming, the Yankee's coming. They like me, but I think they're a little like, eh, you know. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so you've got this nice brooch, multicolored, Austrian crystal, costume jewelry brooch. How'd you acquire this? It was my mother's. It was your mother's? Uh -huh. It's nice. It's pretty. I like it. It would match. We matched my little blue lanyard and everything, right? It was your mother's. So you kept it all this time out of respect for mom? Yes. Okay. Do you wear it? Most of you do not wear the antique or vintage jewelry, even if it's costume or even if it's real. You don't usually wear it. Why don't you wear it? I'm afraid I'll break it. Afraid I'll break it. Afraid I'll lose it. Oh my gosh, it was mom's. What do I do? She hung it on the curtains in the bathroom. She used to have it on the curtains in the bathroom. So why aren't you wearing it? She's putting it on the curtains and you're not wearing it. Wear it. <laughs> Right? She held the curtains back with it. It's pretty. Was the bathroom blue? Crack me up. This is what's going to happen on HGTV next week. How to pin back your bathroom curtains. They'll make a show out of that. Don't worry. They'll find some hot blonde who doesn't know anything about design who will be doing the HGTV. Oh, look at this. We'll do that. Oh, gosh, I've seen it all. I've been on TV too long. Anyway, all right. So this particular piece is made by the Coro Company, C-O-R-O. Oh, write it down. Oh my gosh, quick. Your husband's sitting next to you like, look, I'm not writing anything. I don't care. <laughs> C-O-R-O, the Coro Company of New York, right? It's made about 1945 to about 1965. I think yours is probably 1948 to 1952 or so, in there. That's a neck of the woods, right? They continue to make this. Would that be right in your family history? Yeah, she was born in 1932. She's born in 32, so by 42, she's 10. By 52, she's 20. So could she have gotten it in her late teens? She could have got it when she was around 16. She could have gotten it when she was around 16, which is the numbers that I just gave you, the dates I just gave you. And I don't know your mother, and I don't know you either. We only just met in the bathroom, right? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. We always met in the bathroom. But OK, so you've got that. All right. Value on it, about $75. It's very nice. I would not use it to hold up the curtains. <laughs> Let the curtains hang, what the heck? I'm going to wear it in my daughter's wedding. You're going to wear it in your daughter's wedding. Oh, that's so nice. Because it's a hand-me-down kind of thing. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That will look beautiful. Are they going to have blue? You're wearing blue in your daughter's wedding? You're wearing green. You're wearing blue. So you're going to try to match him. Well, that's good. I think that's wonderful. Congratulations to you and your daughter. That's a wonderful thing. That's a nice thing. Costume jewelry. It is not real. Austrian crystals. Austrian crystals. It's a, it's a fancy word for colored glass. But again, they have value because costume jewelry is making a big comeback. Big. Here's another piece of costume. Oh, here's another piece of jewelry. To whom does this belong? Margaret. By way of your husband, right? <laughs> One free per person, right? OK. So what did you bring me? This is grandma's, this is older. This piece dates from the 1920s. Is that possible in your family history? That one's kind of hard to see. I'm trying to hold it up. That one's kind of hard to see. We'll give it to you in a second. So in the middle is an element that looks like an opal, but it is a faux opal. It's not a true fire opal. It's trying to look like an opal, but it's not a true fire opal. Okay? And it has all stones around it. Don't think you're going to get it, but you could give it a Good old college try. But the thing that I want you to learn when you're looking at this is I want you to learn what the back looks like. If the back actually has this somewhat, um, this complete ring, this complete ring, and also sort of a brassy color of gold, it's a golden color, but it's more of a brassy gold, right? Then you know that piece probably dates from about the 1920s before they're starting to use the oxyacetylene torch to put these things together. So they're actually molding or casting each one of these. The oxyacetylene torch is not introduced to weld together pieces until after World War II. So you know that they're not using that to make this piece of jewelry. Different from your other piece of jewelry, which dates from the 40s, 50s. Okay? Value on this piece, about $10. So one seventy-five, dollars and one is 10